Hey everybody, Mark Dawes here and welcome to the course. Now, if you know me, you know that in the past I've spoken about the use of restrictive techniques that may cause either intentionally or unintentionally some discomfort, harm or pain. And I've mentioned that these techniques are not illegal, provided that they are used reasonably to prevent a greater harm where no lesser use of force option would be an option. And this is even the case with children and young people. However, I've recently been involved with a couple of cases that raised issues with regards to whether the use of force to control a young person or a child can be legally used solely for the purposes of maintaining good order and discipline within a secure training center, care home, healthcare, and or school environment. So with the help of Eric Baskind, who has double checked everything I'm about to tell you, I intend to give you a much bigger overview on the background to where this power to use physical force to maintain good order and discipline with children and young people came from. And the reason that this is important is because as trainers, consultants and commissioning agencies, we can all be held accountable for the advice and instruction we provide to others. Now, if you've been following my videos and blog posts, then you will also know that if we give advice and guidance that is legally incorrect and someone is harmed as a result, then any insurance cover we have, we have becomes null and void. And if you Google that, you, you can find that blog post and watch that video. Now, two primary acts of parliament state that staff can use force for the maintenance of good order and discipline. They are the Criminal Justice and Courts Act 2015 and the Education and Inspections Act 2006. However, there have been a number of court rulings that have highlighted that the use of force for the sole and primary purpose of maintaining good order and discipline is illegal. And that is what this short course is going to reveal to you. In it, I'm going to give you a full chronology of the background to the Criminal Justice and Courts Act 2015 and the Education Inspections Act 2006, as well as an overview of what the law actually states with regards to this issue. And I've also provided you with the PowerPoint slides of the presentation that I've used to make this course so that you can take them and use them in your own training delivery. I've broken the course down into 10 short videos so that you are not overwhelmed and so that you can stop or start again at your leisure. Enjoy the course and if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to email me at markdoors at nfps.info. Speak soon.